I appreciate this opportunity to say a few words about my husband on the republication of his book, Liberalism. And I shall speak about one side of his character, which I believe has never been much noticed. Ludwig von Mises was, of course, a great economist. But to those of us who were close to him, he was much more than that. Certainly, he was admired as a scholar, a seer who saw the existence of economic principles which had escaped the vision of all who came before him. But what endeared him most of all of his followers was his humanity. A careful reading, or may I say rereading of his books, will reveal that he was also a great humanitarian. I say this because it seems to me that he lifted economic science out of a materialistic rut. He raised it above the mere study of crisis and production and the poverty or wealth of nations to a level of deep concern for human freedom. He elevated the language of economics to a higher plane, above the always used classroom discussion language with its demand and supply curves, its mathematical equations, its marginal utilities and opportunity costs, terms which ordinary readers, even some scholars in other fields, cannot comprehend. Ludwig von Mises brought economics, so to speak, out of the closet of professional monopoly and made it mean something to the average man by demonstrating the relation of economic science to the freedom of the individual. Other economists gave their, gave their great work such titles as Principle of Political Economy or the General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money or the Wealth of Nations. But Ludwig von Mises' vision stretched far beyond the realm of money, prices and exchange. Others might write a very good book on economic freedom and title it the God of the Machine. But it remained for Professor von Mises to wrap up the whole significance of economic science in just two words, human action. Two words which embody and relate the value of the human spirit to the movement of the market which reflects it. Yes, I believe my husband infused economics with a vigor, with an elaine which runs like a leitmotif throughout all of his writings. He challenges the reader not only to understand the economic principles involved in human action, but also to realize the full meaning of human action in terms of human welfare and the fatal results for humanity if that lesson is not learned. All through his writings, there is glowing evidence of his concern for his fellow human beings. He never showed it publicly in his behavior, beyond an unfailing courtesy and thoughtfulness to others and an always gentlemanly manner. But in his writing, his concern for the victims of statism and tyranny was more than just apparent. It was eloquently expressed. And there was always a challenge in his books for the reader to display the same persistence and courage that he himself displayed throughout his whole life. That was why his followers admired the his followers admired him for more than his greatness as an economist. They admired his consistency and his courage. Even when times were darkest for him, he never failed to speak out for freedom. He never flinched from defense of the great humanity which he felt and for which he spoke. Today, many fine scholars are publishing papers and books, dealing with his ideas and extending his thoughts. Yet, as far as I know, 
no one has produced a commentary on Ludwig von Mises, the humanitarian, the scholar who demonstrated beyond all doubt that human welfare and human destiny are inextricably linked with an understanding of economic laws and a willingness to abide by them, and that human rights are without meaning if the proper economic policy does not go with them. Four years from now, we shall mark the 40th anniversary of the first publication of Human Action. That book is now available in six languages, and its predecessor, National Economy, has been republished in a new German edition. I hope that anniversary will be honored in those six countries just as much as we are honoring today the republication of liberalism. I thank you for inviting me here and, more importantly, for honoring one of my husband's finest books. I sincerely hope that Ludwig von Mises will be remembered as much for his humanity as for his wisdom. And in closing these brief remarks, I can think of no better words than those of Dr. F. A. Harper, formerly of your foundation and later president of the Institute of Humane Studies. Dr. Harper, in honoring my husband with a festive in 1971, said, and I quote, this remarkable man has appropriately been called a champion of the potential of humans." End of quotation. And Professor Hayek, a dear friend and my husband's most famous follower, summed up all I have said tonight when he paid tribute to my husband, and I quote, If I am to put into a single phrase my main impression of the man, or to sum up the chief feature of, of his character, I can think of no better expression than the English term, he had the courage of his convictions. He had the courage of his convictions, as had very few people I have ever known. When he regarded something as right, he would pursue this point with persistence, whether it brought him ridicule or enmity or even hatred. He suffered, but he persevered because what he expounded were his profound convictions. He knew that he was right, and he was in time proved to have been right. End of quotation. In parting, let me now quote my husband. We do not consider tonight's celebration a farewell party. We do not say goodbye. We say till next time. Thank you. Good night.